You got this queued up or what, boss? I can keep futzing with it if you want. All right, stop jerking on your mic there, Nick. It, it liked it. And, and Josh, you uh, you it, have it really do you not have it. permission to touch any axes tonight? Yep, no, no hatchets for me. I feel like this one's calling to me. Pun intended. You remember that book back in elementary school called Hatchet? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's not the story of my life. Is it the one where the kid lives inside the hemlock tree? It's the follow-up to My Side of the Mountain. That's the one where the plane crashes and he just has a hatchet. Oh. I don't know. I've never heard of it. All right. So, according to... There's already somebody's phone number on my coast. We have five five viewers already. They are, they are uh, in tonight. Well, heck, we're beating Brunswick County's health. Chris, page. Matt, others. Yeah, hey. Happy Monday, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the fabled, finally, the fabled episode 87. You've heard much about it. Yeah, Nick has been uh, touting it for... Months and months, you know, um, <laughs> and despite Josh's ability to give himself the axe, we, we, we made, did not. We made it after our uh, been, uh, 86, you know. So to get 86, literally throw the axe at ourselves and come battling back to episode 87 is quite a feat. Oh yeah, hey, I still have my feet. You gotta turn that down. They're gonna start getting feedback. I'm sorry. I was just making sure we were still on because, again, we were having some technical difficulties <clears throat> last week, but it appears we're not having them I, this week. I can hear me. Can Can you hear me? I can definitely hear me. Yeah. Yeah. It's well said. All right. Yeah. There. Uh, it's it's great question. Great question. Awesome. I'll field that one right up the top. Uh, it's Boulevard. The calling. It's a double IPA. Uh, it's what I'm sipping on. Uh, it's going to be my cleanser. I know. Why the heck is Nick cleansing with a double IPA? Well, you'll find out. <laughs> I'm on the Bee Nectar Zombie Killer Hard Cider with honey and cherry. I love this stuff. All right, guys. Uh, for those that are uh, watching live, just give me a little quick uh, post that you are seeing and hearing us still. Uh, just because Facebook, you know. I'm still waiting for the All person who decides to call Rob right now. No, 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 no. Well, I just had a call, but it wasn't from anybody here. Okay, so anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm too worried about making sure we're on, and, and that's my fault. Uh, I believe we are on. You've um, talked about it for 12 and a half. Now I know why they skipped the first 12 and a half minutes. I know, right? You got to <laughs> skip ahead to, to minute 20 for get funny. Skip to minute 20 to get funny. So I'm drinking a new cider that we have in the shop uh, to, uh, this week. I think we got Friday. Uh, cider Boys. Yeah. It's the Strawberry Magic. So yeah, it's it's kind of geared towards uh, women, but let me tell you, it's it's nice, refreshing strawberry. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know we had it. You see, I like strawberries, Rob. I didn't know yeast I do tenderized. Too. I do too. I guess not. I mean, hey, I make. <laughs> I'm just making stuff up. I like it. Whatever. <laughs> Screw you guys. Who, what beer are we doing first? Uh, it's a great question. I, I don't even know what Josh threw in. Like, I put... I entered the beers in. I put them on ice. I literally don't even remember what... I got the lazy Ooh, bird. Okay, he's got a bird Oh, brown. hey, you know what? We might want to do the wine first. Let me go grab the wine. And I was, <laughs> it was on ice in the ice pit. I've got this ridiculous thing from Stone Brewing. I don't even... A stone Brewing. Like, there's a whole thing on there. Maybe it's good it'll take the place of the wine because it literally is like, you know, Stone's in San Diego and, and Virginia, but they say something about bringing down their brewers from Napa. Yeah. So, um, kind of curious. I'm really curious about that. This other oh, coaster. So if you want to do the wine first, we have a rosé, so we can do it. Uh, a rosé. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, Josh, don't get Spanish up. rosé? Is that what we want to do? So you doing this here, Rob? Cool. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to send this this way. Okay. That's Nick. Josh. Man, I can't imagine what it would be like to have long arms, Nick. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Josh can't get up right now. Yeah. He played uh, throwing axes last night, and it I, bounced off the target. I, he I came always, uh, back and hit him in the leg. Here we, and, go. Here yeah. we go. And so he, he had to walk himself 10 blocks to the hospital. 
<laughs> uphill. Uphill, both ways in the snow. Nobody would help. <laughs> Uh, he did get a uh, six centimeter gash, I think it was. Yeah, I think with eleven he, staples. He applied ba- uh, first aid with a banana leaf. So I'm gonna say most of that story is true. You decide which part isn't. <laughs> I told myself it was a banana leaf, and it made the whole thing go a lot it made, better. It made it all better. <laughs> <laughs> all I know is when I closed my eyes last uh, night. I will, I will go ahead and give give everybody a little bit of advice. Just respect the axe. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so yeah, that's very true. Here we go. I'm, I'm getting close so we can see the name because it's kind of washing out under this light. We're still in the uh, the original uh, studio. Well, Studio was two was uh, being used again late tonight, so tonight we are drinking the Care Solidarity Rosé. This Ooh. is a uh, Spanish little Spanish rosé. It's made a fifty percent Cab Ooh. Sauvignon and fifty percent Tempranillo. Speaking of strawberries, yes, uh, Cab Sauvignon and Tempranillo. That's mine. that's correct. So that's that's two extremely red grapes. Oh. So this is Tempranillo not is the king of red in Spain, so yeah. yeah so this is not a, a blend of red and whites. This is your typical uh, true, like, blushed red grapes. Yeah, um, I just want to let you know, Nick, you are, like, right behind your mic. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they don't care about my face. They, they don't care what you look like. They just want to hear your pretty voice. <laughs> Honestly, the number of times I've been told to, like, hey, can you put this on? And it's a mask. <laughs> it's a brown paper bag. <laughs> Nick was the original unknown comic. <laughs> All right, maybe not the original. That, maybe that, the, the unknown comic grandson. That is a dated joke, Rob. It is. That would, that would be a... <laughs> can we just rip off that concept and just do that at the office? Uh... If you ask Matt, yes. He, well, he already designed the stage head, so we'll just use the box. He made a box mask. That was awesome. I liked his little beret on top. All fun. right, Ernest is joining in. Hey, Says, Ernie, what's up, guys? The big Cheers. Ernie. Yeah, he, Ernie, he skipped up, exactly 12 and a half minutes, didn't That's he? That's right, yeah, yeah. We're, and now we're like, drinking wine. He's all confused. He's like, <laughs> yeah. what did I miss? Yeah, Ernie, we're starting with the, uh, the rosé tonight. Um, Spanish uh, Rosé, Cab uh, Sauvignon, and Tempranillo 50-50 blend. Mm. Uh, as the guys mentioned, there's a lot of strawberries on the nose on this. Mm, and, and some cream, I'd get. Yeah, strawberries so and strawberries cream. and cream, yeah. This, cream guys, ones. there's this is just really pleasant. Um, this is a new one. We I think we tasted this, what, two weeks ago with the rep? And we yeah. got it just last week? Or it might have been last week we tasted it. Could have, yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's just several things... Sorry if that made awful noise to you guys. There are several things that uh, I like about this wine. The availability of fruit, the floral tones, uh, the body of it. Uh, it's got this tartness that's really fun. Uh, but from the color, I'll, let's just talk about that color. When they say rosé. This is, yeah, this is rosé. This is right there. pink. And you know what? Spring. We're getting into ro- what's called rosé season typically. I mean... Oh, yeah. Spring into late spring, early summer, man, and hell, rock rock rosé is all all yeah, summer long. Is usually new, though. Is that Thanksgiving? Yeah, yeah, it's in November, and you can keep it. You can keep it November. Yeah. We'll take uh, rosés in spring any day. <laughs> rosés on St. Patty's Day, definitely. That's the. Hey, who's got their corned beef and cabbage ready to go? This guy. Boy, they they had them for sale down at the store. Mm. Um, I do like a good corned beef. I'm more so, of like I want the cabbage soup. I want like the potato cabbage soup okay. and some soda bread. Ooh, the yeah. corned beef. I'll take it or leave can't, it. Can't find good soda bread. I know you guys there. love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been can. a while. Yeah. Um. So back to the wine. Uh, I completely forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, the other thing to love about this price point. Eleven bones. Oh man! Ooh, wow. Those are little light thin bones. Those are eleven dollars. Eleven bucks. Boy. Yeah. I tell you what, though, I mean, I, the strawberry carries over on the palate like crazy too. I mean, eleven bones. I I could spend more money on two bottles of beer in here. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, or go with the rosé, you know. So that's value right there. Uh, the label's really fun. Looks like a Picasso it does. or something. All, all, the, all the labels do for from, from this distance, winery. It looks like it says cake. Oh uh, yeah. I agree with you. The, yeah. the stylized R there. Um, 
I'm digging this wine. Uh, nice little rosé. I think we're... Don't know what else to say. I mean, we're coming into rosé season. I'm going to be drinking a lot of rosés this, this spring, I can tell. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm kind of getting... Honestly, guys, I'm my palate has gotten a little burnt on, on these... Uh, uh, big bitter beers for me, so I'm probably gonna slide into more more of the white and red uh, rosé wines. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm a, I've always been a huge fan of rosé. So oh, I can't wait. Just... <laughs> Delightfully, I know you're the hop head, and you can't wait. Until, I, this till one, long. this one really is even gonna blow me away. They're starting, to, they're starting to come out. Um, Blast me off, I should say. But uh, yeah, so. I think this is going to be a staple for us this summer, and I think that that there'll be a lot of bottles going through on this one. This softness on this is uh, just really fun. Uh, it just has this very pleasant, soft palate. Dad's watching. Um, but I definitely get that there's that touch of like the Cabernet Sauvignon skin, that, that little, little bit that has that bit color. Of there's just this little minor tannin, even kind of like a cinnamon stick mm-hmm. uh, feel. Yeah, both Cab and uh, Tempranillo are not generally... A full red of them have nice tannin structure. Mm-hmm. So even just getting a little of the, the skins in here to get yeah. the color is going to... Just a little tiny tickle, it's fine. Give, the, give that tannin, yeah. But that's a that's a really nice body on that one, too. It's very, very drinkable. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, that I, one's crushable. I don't want to go off on it uh, that potentially uh, there's some, you know, seafood whitefish could go with this. But also, oh, yeah. I just think pork... Yeah, that definitely. Nine uh, ways pork, of pork with pork. this. Is good with that. Um, I don't think it's going to be a grilled pork with uh, pineapple, pineapple curry. curry, but I do think uh, it could go with some pork dishes, definitely. Mm-hmm. Barbecue mm-hmm. pork, yeah. by all means. You know, that little note of that tannin, that'll definitely stand up to the meat yep. and a little bit of the fattiness in the meat. There you I say, it does go with bulgogi really well. Okay. <laughs> it's like watching, Ernie says it's like watching Strange <laughs> Brew tonight. <laughs> we should, hey, where's the organ? Yeah. Did they are they playing the organ over the loudspeaker? <laughs> All right, guys. Um, next, in case of that, let's go ahead and move on to a beer. Uh, who's wrecking my palate first with that stuff? Because I know, I know for a fact, I'm looking at uh, uh, at least one uh, dipper. Yeah. Well, Rob, is, I know you love to get into this one because of the theme. Somebody help hop along. This is like Mary Poppins cooler. Oh, so there's uh, we got a brown. Okay, yeah. all right. Lazy Bird Brown. Lazy Bird, bird Brown. Pulled one on you, Rob. We got you. We don't often taste a lot of browns on the show. That's true. Um, we went for a while where we were not having browns in stock, and that's a an oversight on my part well heck guys we got one on tap right now and it's selling yeah like brown so absolutely i didn't know this was a thing but like it looks like browns are in yeah uh they're solid beers so. which you know loggers are in browns are in and anytime i see those styles uh really in in the uh microbrew world i'm kind of thinking that basically we're having like a lot of returning beer drinkers like old old folks uh, who are classically drinking their regional favorites are now trying some micro brews that they've heard about from their kids or their friends, as well as guys. Uh, here, you know, it's been another ten years for us. Well, there's there's a whole new class of beer drinkers every single year, every single day. Someone turns twenty one on a college campus in America. Right? Yeah, but we've been stuck on this seltzer thing for a bit. Yeah, we gotta get out of that. So I like seeing these browns and these lagers because it tells me that maybe there is a way out of this seltzer thing and it's just good old fashioned beer uh, flavored beer, beer and ale. Beer yeah. flavored beer. I like that. I'm happy you, to You drink. guys are set over there, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Oh, wow. You guys, are you sure? Because you left me a lot. Yeah, I probably left you a lot. Don't worry about it. I'm good. You're going to get it back. It looks like there's plenty of beer. You're going to get it back on the next one because I'm probably not going to have as much. All right, so this is uh, Josh's, correct? Absolutely. uh, Lazy Bird Brown, Birdsong Brewing out of Charlotte. Um, I've always been a huge fan of this brewery. Um, I've had this beer plenty of times before, but I did want to bring it onto the show just to showcase the brown. Like I said, something we don't often do. Little... Funky lettering. What type of there? There's. I'm thinking like a some type of TV show um, lettering. 
it just feels like it has this kind of like very late sixties, early seventies ish like TV show. Yeah, I, I almost there. wanted to say Sesame Street for a minute, but Lazy Bird. Well, like graffiti style too. So, uh, brown ale, sixteen ounce can, uh, Charlotte, like Josh said. We're looking at three fifty oh. at sixteen and five point five percent ABV. So it's like it's a solid ABV. It's not gonna like wreck you if you drink a couple of these. Ooh. You know something I'm picking up that I don't recall picking up the first time I tried one of these is um there's uh some smoke on the nose. A little bit of smoke, yeah, yeah, yeah. That roasty roast little, malt little coffee. Yeah, very quickly that smoke goes right into like a coffee kind of roasty uh, thing. So when I say smoked, I definitely mean like smoked food, smoked meat. Yeah, um, I think that carries through a little bit. I think it goes more roasted coffee Absolutely. type thing on the... You guys get a little uh, cacao nib kind of... Yeah. And um, a little bit of malty sweetness too. Like the balance is really nice between yeah. this. And it's not terribly bitter, but the hops are present. A little bit of like a honey kind of... Uh, backbone in there in that malt that's fun too which is on a little bit of the lighter end of the, what keeps it brown yeah Kevin Hollister yeah so we'll, it's we'll, we'll like, do Bill's light uh, sometime soon Kevin oh man he's <laughs> watch out Kev. somebody else was in here drinking Bill's light they found him <laughs> but don't worry we just got a fresh case Ernie says he's drinking a, a new anthem on cassette Eight percent double IPA. He was bragging oh, about that. Oh yeah, good for him. Maybe celebrate. <laughs> now that New around. Anthem is with a distributor, uh, we'll have them more often. Yeah, we had a great round with the Kolsch and the uh, the Ill, the Illis. The yeah, that was pretty fun. Um, what what I like about this brown is just uh, nothing offensive about it. Uh, could it could really fit in a good beer drinking session with different flavors. Uh, be unique. But then it has uh, basically like a thin enough texture where you could just end up right back on the. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, Josh. These and I guys are playing at each other pogo <laughs> stick. Over the I thought they were giving me a cue to sit up straight. No, 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 no. We're uh, just... just essentially that it's got a soft texture. It's not going to really just like. It's not going to take over your palate. You're going to be able to go on and drink other stuff uh, and still taste and yeah. enjoy, it, including food or other beers. So, uh, what I want to know, Josh, is how is this beer working with your axe injury? It's hurting a little bit less. Excellent. That's, that's what it's supposed that's to what do. what we're looking for, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, It'll be fun to stand up. <laughs> Are you going to be <laughs> hobbling, hopping down the steps again? You'll look, luckily, they're nice and bright now. So. I'll tell you what, doing the pogo jump <laughs> for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's not My fun. My leg is ripped right now. Man. Yeah, it's kind of... <laughs> ripped. <laughs> He's been hopping on it for one day. It's ripped. <laughs> I thought that, yeah. <laughs> you see how much I like. <laughs> Some really good workouts. Well, that, that goes, you know, I know a young football player who recently got into the game and uh, was just going on and on to uh the parents uh about the benefits of football and how in one less than one week's time it was just a complete brand new totally cut specimen yeah, he's completely just god's right gift now. to the world a true adonis <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. too bad ashley's not watching she'd get a big laugh oh yeah we'll get we'll get her cued in on that <laughs> okay so uh <laughs> yeah that was good we actually <laughs> See, yeah, would... nice brown, uh, nice cocoa nibs, nice uh, coffee, roasted coffee. Yeah, a little I get bit it all. Of tight, a little bit of smoke. All that, all that's very true. Uh, oh gosh, I've got, I shouldn't have poured so much. That's a, uh, that's a very refreshing beer, honestly. Hey, it's easily uh, drinkable too. Man. Yeah, I think so. You ready to ready to try what's next, Rob? Sure, bring it on. We're gonna fly you to outer space. So I I knew this was happening without. The, I mean, I I looked at it all weekend, going, I know exactly what Nick's picking. It just seemed like something something Rob's been looking forward to for a long time finally happened this weekend. 
It, I'm not talking about O State beating Michigan. Oh, yeah. Uh, I watching me get injured. I'm not. Yes, I'm not talking about that. Uh, Rob's favorite piece of aircraft finally landed correctly. They did it. They did. They did it. I missed that. I know. Me too. And then all of a when sudden, was it was that? in the news. They said they did it. I'll have to go back. And look I missed for it. the what event. Happening. We're, talk, we're talking about spaceship. This is this why I'm being eleven. I'm, I'm being extremely coy about this because wow. I'm, t- I'm telling you, that Starship. Excuse me, Starship Eleven. I never actually saw it happen or heard about it while it was happening. I only later saw. I know Sunday the they had a. Uh, it was visible. They had a from, SpaceX uh, launch mm-hmm. that the time of day and the cloud structures had a. There was a, a funky. Um, Jet trip, not jet trail, but trail that it made as it went through. But that was SpaceX, not Starship. All right. Well, hey, we'll we'll reach out. We'll find out our sources. Oh yeah, there. right after I get this go uh, yeah, tonight, I'll be checking in on it. But that's <laughs> the other thing, though, is uh, there was other astronomical events. We we got visions from Mars recently. That's right. Uh, you know, it's really the space adventure is going on. It's Stone, I think, wanted to celebrate. We got a uh, this. No, ne- yeah, this coming Saturday we've got a near miss flyby from an asteroid. Oh, nice! That sounds fun. Stone Viking Space Probe Hazy Double IPA. This Hazy Double IPA is eight point five percent, and it does come with a little paragraph. Now, Rob is so we're beating Ernie's eight percent double IPA. Bingo! <laughs> on top, Whoa. on top of Nick's taster. Today, which is a, a double IPA, eight point five percent. Nine point five out of six. Nine point five out of six. Oh, that was so that was a deep. Who's down. got a bottle opener? Ernie, you got one here. Let me. Uh, Josh always has one. Thanks. It, th- that was Don't really that was really time. quick. This I've used this one a few times. I recognize this one. It, uh, Use it a couple times. I hope you know how to use it. Leave no stone unturned, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> nice push. Ooh. Oh, it's vegan. Oh, it's marked as vegan. So what? What does what does that mean when it comes to beer? Um, none of the grains. That's got a picture to... of a flower. In none the state of, of California, none of the grains were used by animals or uh, Isenglass. Or used, what? You, Isenglass used to find the beer and get it clear. It's fish bladder extract, oh. commonly present in Guinness and some other mass-produced beers. How'd it go? Did you get a good sample? I think I got a bigger sample than I wanted. Why? Why you keep pouring me strong tonight? God, he get, he did it again. You don't have to take what we give to you. It, Rob. It's just like it, it's what's left in the bottle. <laughs> it's like. Go into his glass. You just seem to enjoy it. It's well, it, it wants to go into the glass. It goes. Did into I mention the glass. that it's unfiltered? Hoppy Cosmic Nebula, Stone oh. Viking Space Probe. Yeah. What, what else does it say on that label? There's like a whole paragraph there. Rob oh, loves those paragraphs. No. I... <laughs> no. No, you you no. Let me see here. See if I can glean anything good. What was the uh, price tag on this? It's on the cap. It's a two seventy five, I think, or three fifty. Three fifty. I was gonna say two seventy five. Somebody price that. Wrong. Did that. I do what I can for you guys. <laughs> and what little time I have. I I think that's the first time I've seen the vegan logo on a beer. I don't recall seeing that. The whole that that whole labeling. It seems true to stone, but there's a lot of different. Choices they Oh, made. I like that. Leave, leave no stone unturned.com. It's their website. And but it's you upside have, down. You have to turn it upside down to be able to read it. So in there, it says something about getting the boys from Napa down to help with this one. Napa with a. Oh, stone brewing team in Napa. So they have a, a brewery in Napa, I guess. In wine country. So maybe we did save the wine for last. Let's not let's not push this it. This is not wine. Oh my god, guys. It's hoppy. 
the bitterness on this compared to this other double the, the other double just is like a malt burger which is funny because it's just one malt and eight different hops endless determination i seriously feel like what they're saying here on this boulevard is meant to compete with stone like they're like going right at it so that yeah that's big hot bitter on the nose I, it's tough to get this beer to like hit my tongue i don't it's the trademark aggressive hopping of stone i mean they always just hop so aggressively it's they, like and they don't apologize for it either it is like so acidic. It like it's difficult to get it to sit on my tongue. Like it. I probably would have to be in the mood to drink this. And I don't think I could drink a lot of it. I'm not I sure. I actually think it's pretty tasty. It is. So for somebody who doesn't like a lot of the bitter hop, Rob's loving it. I don't want it to sit on my tongue. <laughs> I might have to chug it. <laughs> I think caught, he caught what I was saying. Yeah, it's... Uh, All right, so... It's one of those that it's so, like, juicy with it that you want to just keep drinking it for the refreshing quality. I get, like, a note of, like, spice on the back end, too. It, it has a little bit of sweetness to it, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like a honey honey orange coriander. Like, yeah. almost like a Belgian-type finish. Yeah, I wouldn't quite say Belgian. Yeah, yeah it's not... Yeah, one, once the hops have killed my... That sector of my my palate, <laughs> I can I can start tasting other things. Yeah, once your tongue goes numb, it. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm getting a little sweetness. I am getting a little of that orange juice, like coriander, also <laughs> like you said. Oh, Ashley just joined us. She missed the comment about her ripped son. <laughs> uh, Nick Nick couldn't help himself. I didn't. You said that's who it was about. We just entertained. What? No naming was done. No, no I naming of the, of the young one. But we did call out Ashley. We did call out and Ashley. And then minutes later, somebody was like, you better tune in. The boys are talking about yeah. you. <laughs> Probably Matthew called her up. <laughs> they did it again. <laughs> um, I, I would keep an eye on us. I, it's I'm, not a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we are... This uh, is too hoppy for me. It's really hoppy. It kind of... Honestly, this is one of those I'm glad I'm sharing because yeah. the flavors are really fun, but it's a lot. Like, it's it's bitter. It has a bitterness that is... It is so bitter, it's citrusy. My and I know we've talked about this. that as being New England style. You said Kent, your dad would love yeah, it. Dad yeah, would, oh, yeah. Dad would, oh, dad yeah. Drink the heck out of this. Yeah. You just got to stop hiding it from... I don't... <laughs> I mean, it's just like kind of a little bit behind the center bar. Well, it's... And Ken can't see over there on the center bar. It's like kind of known... He's got to look all the way to the right. We've been pushing those Imperials right to that center bar here. No, the 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 Ken, Ken's got to look all the way to the right. He can't see anything towards Where's the center. Where's the light That's beer? Like, uh, get all the way in that door. Yeah, and it's I, over I there. Sash the, I sash the good beer behind all the NA beers. So he doesn't like anything He doesn't like anything center or left. Left of center. Yeah, he's always got always got to be the right. <laughs> oh. If you ever watch him look in the cooler, he opens the right door first, and he looks from right to left, and he gets halfway to the left, back to the right. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, so but uh, but he is one of, he's one of the few people I know that will stand in front of a clear glass door. And hold it open so you can see what's in the cooler. You know they yeah. say <laughs> they say hazy, and yeah, there is a haze, but it uh, it's not it's not like a beer you can't see through. It's there's like this moving haze, this like visible. I don't know. Rob's looks really hazy. From he got there. the bottom, and he poured all of it all yeah, the way I think, over. I think Rob got some sediment. It, <laughs> don't worry, Rob. It's good for you. It's I've, good for you. Just chug it. It'll be good for you. Well, if there's yeast present in it, like the dead yeast will help prevent hangovers. Little known fact. How does it come on? That actually works? Yeah, because it has like a bunch of B vitamins and stuff. B vitamins. Rob, did you get your B vitamins today? (sighs) I had a multivitamin. Beer is a a veritable multivitamin. Uh. (laughs) 
It was nice. That was that was pushed. I I'm just a, had to get it out of me. Okay. Uh, Do you really want to rate that one? No, it just smells like Korean food. God, just with uh. I feel really bad for Nick over here. I if Winnie, I, I, honestly, don't feel bad for me. Now. <laughs> Ashley's tuned in. She'll she'll be like, "What is that smell in this office in tomorrow?" The <laughs> Hey, let me tell you right, that is beef bulgogi. It's just, you know, the fish sauce is just a notoriously hard smell to get out of anything. Oh, Charlotte's watching. Hey, Charlotte, how's that uh, Chardonnay, <laughs> Chardonnay doing? That's nice. <laughs> this is not the time Charlotte drank too much wine. Well, not here at the office. <laughs> Charlotte never drank too much wine here at the it's, office. I want to clarify that. There, well, there are no but, stories about Charlotte here drinking wine at the office. I, I could follow that not story up with the fact that no one calls it extra beer that's just more beer so there's no extra wine you didn't drink too much you just drank more than you should have (laughs) yeah (laughs) let's just you know we'll clear that up right now there are no extra beers in the inventory those are just more More beer beer. yeah oh yeah um I mean there is the point of no return (laughs) yeah Let's go ahead and rate some stuff. I'm, I'm down. I'm me. down. Because uh, that 8.5 and that 5.5 are starting to add together to like 15. Oh, is God. your palate cleanser yeah. also an 8.5? No, no, oh. no, no. It's, it's only 5%. Lucky and you. I've, and I've just got to the neck of it. <laughs> I don't know what mine is. All right. So um, five, five, we're going to review in order the Care Spanish Rosé. Solidarity, 2019, 50% Cabernet Sauvignon and 50% Tempranillo. Uh, Tempranillo is the king of the grapes in Spain. Uh, a lot of times you'll see uh, Tempranillo Tinto on the bottles. Tinto meaning king. Um, so, for me, uh, nice little uh, rosé. Um, Nice strawberry cream notes on the nose. Strawberry definitely carries over on the palate. A little bit of uh, residual tannins from the skins. I liked it. Uh, did not come across very acidic. Um, there was a little acid, though, but uh, the more the, the pucker came from the tannins, I think. And I really think this is going to be a great spring-summer wine. Uh, $11.00. For a Spanish rosé. Come on, guys. Uh, we don't have to drink uh, rosés from Provence all the time, right? No. Especially at their prices. So, I even given the flavor, I honestly have... You know, there is a springiness to Provencal uh, rosés, but I'm around here in our weather. I actually hey, like actually, those in the uh, early autumn, you know. As things just start they, to cool off, yeah, yeah, like I, I can nights. see that. I can see that as um, as it's it just a little more starts of a floral. to. Yeah. I really like the springiness of the fruit in this. I agree. In in harmony with floral, because we know springtime is it's a big floral event. Your hardwood trees are flowering. You know, um, one thing I do remember when we were uh, tasting, I think Nick might have said it. Uh, he, I think he asked if there was gamay in this. Because there was a bubble gum on the nose. There is that little bit of bubble gum. And there is this underlying sweetness that we all talked about. And I'm glad, actually. I could not remember. That was in one of the early miles of a marathon. Yeah, we, we had a... Uh, that, was, that was a gauntlet. That was... Last week was the gauntlet. Ooh. Anyway, back to my rating on this. Um, I dig this. $11 a bottle. Uh, I think if we get people uh, trying this, we're going to sell cases of it this summer. Um, I'm there at eight five. I mean, one point eight five. One point eight five. Yeah. Oh, cool. I'll follow up. Um, I'm gonna go solid one seven five on it. Um, I think it's really really good. I do like a little bit more floral and buttery in my rosés, but this is a really solid, easy drinking, fruity, delicious rosé. Um, for the price point, I'd say it's probably closer to one point nine. Uh, but taste wise, I'd say one point seven. It's it's a high rating one. Yeah, I mean you cannot go wrong with this if you're drinking rosés or you're looking for something just to sip on. Like, this is good sipping wine. You know, I, I would even go so far as to say 
when it starts really the we get this 60 degree evenings and stuff out here um and our crew from the uh vfw down there wants to come in i'd, I'd sneak a bottle of this in on their della scala and see what happens uh, it's interesting i'm always um if you put more bottles of wine on the table at once you can put different bottles of wine out um, if we do it one at a time, we're going to tend to... There's an name I seen in a while, Robin Walker. That, that, How you that, doing? Like a train of the same, right? But if you throw a couple bottles in your bucket, then people can try a small glass of this or that and find out they might like something like this. And I think absolutely that kind of thinking, and that's even where like uh, I might find someone on the who doesn't normally throw a bottle of wine and be like, hey, throw one of these on the table, see what happens. Um, and those are those great opportunities. And I, it just like the beer that Josh threw in the bucket, a brown ale. Uh, there's a simplicity to brown ale that you know, we all know about it. It's one of the first beers I'll tell we've you tried. What, why don't you give me on the rosé and then go right into the brown ale and that's right. your thought. And then, well, that's what I'm saying about rosé is this Spanish rosé is basically, this is like a brown ale of wine, which okay. is to say that there's some things that are, just really kind of common about it. It's going to be very true to Spanish rosé, very true to even, it reminds me of uh, that Paxis rosé, which is a Portuguese that we had. The yep. way the softness on the palate meets the floral with a little bit of tart fruit and just that gentle blending and uh, a little bit of a, of a spice on, on the tannin note. What I want to give this wine is basically a 165, um, okay. which is to say that this wine is, is fabulous. It's a really good rosé. Um, and then basically I want to throw caveat uh that basically says in price category i'd move this thing up a whole point up to 175 um when you start talking about your 10 to 12 dollar rosés this thing is top class it is king just like you said Uh, but full rating on the two thumb scale 165 and if you want i can go right on into brown yeah why i'm so stoked you're there Um, already i had hoppy beers in front of me i had a double ipa i had a double hazy I had this really flavorful rosé. Having something just on the other end of the taste spectrum that still allowed accessibility to the other flavors was really enjoyable. And in a group tasting, this is really fun. Um, So when you're like picking out that six pack of some deadly beers from us, just don't pass up the fact that throwing in a brown ale could really make your night. Uh, For this beer, uh, actually, it's going to get the same number, 165. And so... Bam, the brown, the rosé, not always our first choice colors when we think about wine and beer, but uh, here the, here we are. They're there you good. Go. They're relevant. I think that was a good, good review, good connection. Uh, I'm going to lean in and say that I really like this beer. Um, I don't think it's the absolute best end-all, be-all brown that I've had, <coughs> but for drinkability and the balance of flavors, and I mean, the price point's not too bad. It's what, $4 for a 16 dollars 350 350 yeah. yeah. It's really not bad for a 16 ouncer. Um, I'm gonna go with one seven just because it's a solid example of the brown ale style. It's drinkable. It's a good sessionable beer. Rob cares. I'll say, I'll say just a little bit. Was he? Was he ASMR? No, I, I was, was saving. That? I was saving just a little for you guys because I wanted to watch the fight over you guys getting the last. Sip out of that bottle. I'm good. I'm Nick pretty sure happen. Anesthesia Boy wants that. <laughs> no. All right. So, would you sell your your brown? One seven for me. Okay. Um, so, you know, I liked it. Um, here, I have not had a lot of exposure to brown ales. Um, I hate saying it. I've had more exposure to the mass marketed one that is like mm-hmm. everybody knows with the little star on it with the. Yellow like label. Kind of yellow, yeah. Looks yeah. like a soccer jersey. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I really dug this one a heck of a lot better. I mean, uh, just the the nuances of the flavor coming out of it versus that mass marketed brown ale. Um, I mean, we're talking the roasted coffee bean actually. Even though I know it wasn't coffee they're going, it was roasted malt more than, than coffee bean. But it, it still made me think of, of coffee. You know, good co- of course, we you know, have coffee here in the shop, and, and I'm used to that smell and, and that flavor. Um, it had the caramel going on, a, you know, a little tad bit of smokiness in there. 
I'm not a big smoky fan when it comes to my beer, which is surprising as much as I like smoked meat mm -hmm. um, and, and cooking that style of, of food. Um, but when it comes to beer, I, I'm not a huge fan of it. Mm -hmm. This was just enough for me that didn't turn me off. Yeah. Um, I like the fact that it just it, it was a well-rounded and easy drinkable beer. Um, and I agree with Nick. It's not one that we go to that often. Um, in fact, we went for probably a solid six months without, without having a brown ale on in stock at all. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> now we have one on the show and a different one on tap. And we have more than one on the shelf. And the one we have on tap, we brought back by popular request. That's right. It's that's our right. second keg it's of it. It's the second keg of it. Exactly right. So it I doesn't mean, happen too often. That's Browns right. are in. Well, and then the one we got from Mackay that it wasn't a brown ale, but it was pretty darn that close. That was an amber. Oh, God, yeah. that was really good. So, um, And by the way, Mackay, we're coming to get Yeah, that we're coming at you double double again this Wednesday for a dip of there um, that Nick ordered the pre-order the keg. I loved it. We were sitting there, and Nick's like, hey, can you save a keg of that for us? I'm like, um, that's supposed to be my line. <laughs> 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 but I couldn't disagree, so... <laughs> So my rating on uh, Birdsong Brewing Company's Lazy Bird Brown Ale. Uh, I think you said 165. You said 175? Seven. 17? Yeah. I'm going to sit right in there with the with the 165. I, I think this was a nice little brown ale that I wasn't expecting. Um, so yeah, 17, 16, 165. 165, yeah, right there. Right there, 165. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done at 165. I think that puts a good aggregate number out there for that beer. Um, that brings us to the Stone Viking Space Probe. It is awesome. Just what? It's like Stone Viking Space Probe Double IPA Hazy Dipper. What else is in space besides stones? Like right now, after drinking that, I'm kind of in space. <laughs> I and let me let me be honest. I think that a lot of times stone has this whole joke with the face and the stone concept. Like they're gonna take you back to the Stone Age when you drink this. Like you're just gonna be like, oh, uh, you're just gonna be edifice devil on the. But this one, that devil has taken you straight to space, man. Yeah, well, like launched you, uh, and that's what it does. It's a launch pad. Um, it's big on flavor. It's almost too big, but it's big. And so guys like Big Earn, who's tuned in, man, you, you're going to love this beer. And the, uh, the price, uh, a three fifty dollars for an 8.5 Dippa in a 12-bottle format, uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Artwork's beautiful. The labeling was well done. Uh, it's classic stoneware. Classic stoneware. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, it, this part kills me. I, you got to rate it. I, I think I end up rating it a little higher than the brown ale. And I don't know that that's necessarily how I felt tonight. Like, I really love the brown ale tonight. But I think, like, as it goes down, like, in my whole rating, I got to, like, bring in all Nick beer drinking time. And I got to go with just, like, a nudge higher, one seven with the stone. And while it's not my favorite Nippa, it was very, very palatable, hazy IPA that was so big I had fun sharing it with my friends, which ultimately is what a good beer does. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I, wanna, I think I want to follow up after that. Um, so I'm not a hophead. Not at all. All right. So I get two ratings here. This is where averages do us a lot of favors, <laughs> by the way, guys. So, <laughs> IBU. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Uh, what Rob kind of likes. What this one really was. Um, it was way out of my palate. Uh, and I really wasn't joking, though. The part of my palate that registers hops got burnt out. Like, after the first or second real big sip, it was the... I wasn't tasting the hops so much more. Yeah. Um, it, but I'm, I'm I with you there. was tasting a little sweetness. I was tasting 
orange juice. I was tasting cardamom, like Nick had pointed out. Um, there were some more flavors coming through. Not a whole lot because half of my palate had been destroyed. Um, but the other half was picking up a lot of different things going on. Uh, is this something I could drink? No. I, 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 couldn't do, I couldn't do a full bottle of this. This is just not my thing. Um, definitely, I you know maybe maybe if it, it was my fifth one in, yeah. I might be able to I might be able to palate it a little bit better. Um, and that's like the fifth IPA in a row. Guys, I'm feeling very warm. Uh, yeah, me too. I, um, like so, my ears are warming. It I'm, feels so very nice. Here, here's the thing. Uh, personally, for me, this is. For me personally, this is like 0.25. However, I'm gonna point. Re- did you just say 0.25? For me, but <laughs> it's like not beer territory. But I'm going to rate it as though a hophead who enjoys it would want to to hear it. Um, I think as hops go, out of they're out of this world. I mean, they they hit you and they keep hitting you and they knock you over three times. Um, if you're a hophead, you're gonna love this beer. This is at 350, a great price point for an 8.5 percent hazy dipper. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm willing to bet that most hopheads, and I'm actually surprised Nick rated this so low. I'm willing to so bet that most hopheads are gonna go one nine on this. I, I I think that for certain small group of people, this is a perfect beer. Okay, and the crafting that Stone did was very nice, and that's where I see Rob going on that. But that's a very small group of people. Yep, I agree. I, however, so, if you so take you Rob said, up, you said you said take the averages. That's right. Beer, so take my point two five and my one point nine, and and bring them together into just to, just right a little over one, I guess. Yeah, oh, yeah. which makes it a beer. I, I gotta say, guys, um, having had a lot of really legendary, awesome IPAs, I, I could never give this one a 1.9. There you go. Okay. Um, Ernie, if you're still watching, you can back me up with uh, Hetty, dude. Once you have the Hetty Topper and really experience some like the crazy IPAs out there that are long sought after, mm-hmm. it will ruin you to a degree. Um, this one is very solid, and I gotta say that if you really like IPAs, I'd give it a 1.7, 1.75. Yeah. I could go as high as a 1.9. Okay. Um, the price point even just hammers in that one to seven five. Me Deal. personally, I'd have to be in the mood for this, or like at a party, and like it just happens to be what's left in the cooler, and I'm like three. Or four we will days. giggle ourselves <laughs> deep if this is the last beer in the cooler. Um, this is not going to be my first choice out of the cooler. Um, but it's it intimidating. A solid double hazy IPA. So one seven five. One seven five. Okay. Awesome. By the way, if you take Rob up on his challenge, I've got a secondary challenge. I'd like you to throw the calling priced, which is, this is the beer I drink as my palate cleanser tonight, priced four fifty, a buck more, but you get a pint uh, from Boulevard, and that's a double IPA. Uh, it's rated as an mm, India Pale Ale, not juicy. Uh, you said take the stone challenge. If you're a high gravity, really hop head drinker, come try the stone so what my challenge to you is then Uh, okay throw the boulevard calling in right next to it and do a little dip a taste off for yourself and just get yourself blast out of this world two beers eight five you do the math oh yeah that that'll definitely get you're 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 calling you're calling into space it's working my evening special right now you're calling into space okay so Episode 87. I don't know if it was as epic as you know all the hype led up to be. I had a lot of fun doing it, though. I think I think uh, things that made it fun were some uh, great choices. We threw the rosé up front. Of course, yeah. rose some, would not some people I want to thank are all the viewers tuning in. Uh, the opportunity to do this in, uh, with an audience is amazing. Uh, yes. We just love sharing with you guys. I, and I, I still, to this day, don't know the significance of episode 87. But... Hey, it just is a thing. It, it finally it's happened. A, it's a legendary. It was a legendary episode that the buildup was was you know I months even, and months in the making. I mutilated myself to get ready for it. That's right. <laughs> he threw an axe at a target. It bounced off, hit him in the shin. He got. And now every time Nick staples. closes his eyes, he sees worms. 
and he hops on his right leg. No, his left leg really good. No, not very good at all. No, um, no, no. That was epically bad. But uh, um, but yeah, no, I I I got prepared for tonight's episode. It's kind of <laughs> and, and he's either going to take the staples out himself or. Uh, maybe a nurse that we we know have some wound care might, specialists yeah, here. Might be able to yank them out for him. some steady hands. Now I might. I, I didn't like the idea of watching the. Staples I kind of like. I might. I might want. Maybe watch we could out. do like how many staples? Eleven. Eleven. So if we did like a little like um, countdown, you could pay twenty bucks to pull to, a staple to Josh's <laughs> medical charity. <laughs> And you could pull a staple, and we'll, a staple. we'll take care. Of, this will take care of Josh's copay. I love to say I have it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it right out in the yard. It'll be great. Wow. He has a picnic table built, perfect for it. Why don't we just do it on the podcast one night? Twenty bucks to pull a staple. <laughs> That, line, that list, that sign up list would be as big as Smash right, Brothers. Is that a line of people I, have, I, have to, I have to ask people who have had staples before does it hurt getting them taken yes. out? Yes. <laughs> a lot more than going in. <laughs> See, the thing is, once the wound heals, you don't really want anybody else poking at it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it would be medically supervised. Well, we would have to get Marley to come up and, and make sure. Oh, that sounds care. like a team building exercise. Yeah, team building exercise. <laughs> Trust. My poor mother said she would help me. The, Trust this, is, this, she, is the, she, this is the last. Mom, hold, hold, hold this drink. This is the last day of your training. <laughs> Mom, this, hold my beer. This is our team building up exercise, your last day of training. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to supervise this. <laughs> That's it's, not like, ah! it's, it's a resume it's test. Uh, it's, it's can you charity. actually do what you told us you do? Don't worry, we'll train you on our VS. Right? <laughs> okay. Just wondering if you're really good at what you do. All right, guys. So um, <laughs> that was episode 87. But before we leave, other than talking about his staples, Josh would like to tell you a couple things. Yeah. If you are watching us on YouTube and not necessarily Facebook Live, please do remember to like, comment, and subscribe below. Um, we don't know what to do or say without y'all commenting and just kind of giving us like a little bit of direction. And we're going to say whatever we want to if you don't. It's like a thumbs up. Absolutely. See, no one told me not to throw the hatchet last week. And if that, if someone had just said don't throw the hatchet, I wouldn't be in this situation. I, I'd take full blame because I was watching the basketball game. But whatever. Yeah. All right, Sometimes guys. it just takes a little bit of direction. <laughs> All right, guys. That's it for us tonight. <laughs> You have a nice one. We will see you next week. Maybe. <laughs>